As you can see, the transom is done and I'm ready to move on to the bottom fairing of the bow, which essentially will be um, doing some sanding to see how much I need to use, which is not very much. In 2002, when I did the bottom of this boat, we put on, I think, enough primer and a couple coats of white and a couple coats of black. But in the last 20 years, um, I've got print through. Well, print through is something you really see with fiberglass cloth, especially with older boats. You'll notice that the paint is either thinning or worn off and you'll see the, the more durable uh, product on the boat is the cloth, which is the fiberglass, and it has lasted, and it's now appearing on the surface of the boat, and you can, I can see it just from looking at the black and at a certain angle, but that's fine. Um, my Alexial paint has arrived from uh, Miller Boatworks, which is Andy from Boatworks Today is also a distributor for Alexio Paint in Northern Michigan. So I have ordered lots of primer, lots of white, lots of black to use on the boat. So I'll be able to put multiple layers of paint on this boat and really bring up the, um, the surface so it's flat it's the way it should be. So I'm really excited to use the Alexio Paint product that Andy has shown a couple times on his video with great success. So. That's what I'll be doing eventually. Now, um, I'm gonna start doing some sanding to see where I am on this 2023 uh, surface and see how much I have to do, if any, of fairing with Total Fair. So, time to get to work. I've long boarded the side once and it was more fair than I even imagined. There's a few spots, like you can see these shiny spots. The shiny spots are low. The rest of it would have been hit with this flexible sander. And I used my medium um, Durablock. Yet, because there's a lot of contour in this hull, you can use the longer boards in the flat areas, but when you get to the, some of these shapes, like when I get closer to the bow, I'm going to have to go even smaller because there's so much um, curve there that, um, you know, your board can be almost too long. So I'll try to hit it on certain angles, trying to get, you know, the flat part, but then I'll get to the smaller, you know, the five inch or maybe even the eight inch block just to try to get into those curves. And the goal is to reveal all these shiny spots and then I'll go through it again. Um, you can see the white here, that is, the whole hull was, was primed, and then I think two or three coats of white, and then I put black on top of white, which gave me a nice, I wanted a, a nice water line, and that just makes it easier if you have one full coat, and then throw on the, your last coat, your color coat, and that, if you put enough on, it'll cover it, but also it gives you an, a nicer, um, uh, joint where the two pieces, two uh, paint colors meet. And you can buff that out and with paint you can buff that out. So you can do that. But uh, the goal is if I get into the white, I know I'm getting down into that next paint level. level. The black is at this point sacrificial. So I can do that. So I might even take this down even closer. If I can get rid of these low spots by going deeper into the black and getting this at least scuffed up for the primer coat, then I'm going to go ahead and do that. But I'm really happy um, overall. You can see some of the white up here. These are the, these would be the, you know, the high spots now. Black would be low and, but it's really close, the black and the white. This black is really thin right now. Here are some of the higher spots that I hit. And ironically enough, you can see the fairing compound back there. So um, these probably were high because of my fairing compound application back in 2002. So um, yeah, fixing some, some, fixing some old problems and getting ready to put a really nice paint on here because with black, especially shiny black, 
it shows all of the problems that um, boat restorers don't take care of in the prep stage or sanding um, really shows. It's like a billboard of mistakes. The white is never that bad. This will also be on the bottom, so it'll be harder to see while well, the black will be up there where all the boat show visitors are um, craning to see if you made any mistakes. So it's important that we get it done. So I will continue on and then go to the other side. I finished the fairing of the the side of the boat or the hull, um, all the black and then even to the white where I get to the chine. Um, that's where I took my paper off the, uh, my flexible sanding pan, just use my hand because you got to get around that chine without burning through that the, it has an edge. So I wanted to make sure I didn't burn through that. So I got this all flattened out. Um, I was happy to see that I don't need any fairing compound. Um, even though the boat's starting to look like a spotted cow, um, it uh, very, very little of the black came off this undercoat of white. The top black went over the old, the whole thing was white, and then I put the top on, which was black. Very few areas where I was worried about it. I just kept sanding lightly with 180 grit on my soft pad and then down here with my hand and very happy to see it's flat. Yeah, when it's shiny, um, it's gonna be super jet black is the color from Alexial that I'm using. And it probably will show some things. Hopefully the primer will show up before I see it on paint. So um, this side essentially is done. And I went ahead and put in the final fairing on the nose of my uh, wooden rub rail. And then just finished putting on a unthickened coat of epoxy resin and hardener to seal it, soak in and then seal it, and then essentially um, make it part of the boat, uh, the glass boat. And then I'll go back through and look for just a few areas I saw I might need a tiny bit of fairing compound and I'll get that in there. And then this will be black in the end and on the underside it'll be white. So then it'll get a aluminum um, trim piece or rub rail is what it is to, to um, finish that off and yeah it'll be all done and so I'm going to now move the boat on angle as you can see how easy it is to work with this boat I had it way up here it was awesome and so um, I'm going to move it meaning turn it this way and then work on the starboard side, but no need to, to repeat that. It's the same thing I just explained. So um, and then I will show you um, how I work on the bottom. So I have the boat turned over to expose the bottom of the hull so that now I can sand that part and I will do a time lapse of that for you because it's just sanding. And then I'll uh, do the back or the starboard side over there later when I do the starboard uh, side as well. I'm real happy with the condition of it. Um, uh, there's some tape, obviously some adhesive from when I had a tarp on it. Um, there's some trailer damage um, on and off a trailer a few times in 20 years, even though it wasn't being used. It had um, some movement down to the primer which is good. I can at least say that it didn't go all the way through. That will be remedied when I um, do the trailer fit. I'll have it in my gantry cranes and I'll be able to lower it slowly and find perfect matches to the bunks. Um, this has a bunk trailer and I'll make sure that my, um, if there are rollers, they're new and pliable and don't do this to my keel. The keel took most of the damage, light damage, but still, um, I don't want that to be the case. And I might even go with a, just a true bunk, have the rollers in there, but not have them touching the boat. Just make sure that it's really sitting on a nice set of um, bunks. Even though this is a fiberglass boat and some people will say that using rollers with fiberglass boats is fine. Um, this is a lightly built, fiberglass boat and it doesn't have a, a rib structure 
It does have um, two stringers and a keel, but I still would like to have the support of a, of a trailer with bunks, and I'll do that um, to the best of my, my ability and just keep it in shape for the rest of my life anyways. So back to work. Did the first pass with the longboard and found like the hull sides, I was pretty happy with the lack of fairing that I would have to do. It's coming out pretty flat with the longboard and then I'll continue to work on like these adhesive marks left from the tape that I had when I had a piece of plastic over it and a tarp. And I'll just, when I get down into this area, again, when that board gets to be too long and it starts to hit, hit more of the high spots and flats, I'll go to an eight inch or a five and a half inch um, sandy block and just not, I'm not putting a lot of pressure on my sandpaper. I don't want to introduce any more work or create uh, low spots that don't need to be done. I'll just be 180 grit slowly and back and forth again and again, vacuuming, cleaning my paper until I get it flat like I did with the black parts. And then we'll be ready for some a little bit of fairing compound, more up here than I thought, but um, see how my sanding comes out and we'll just go from there. I finished completing the um, 180 grit um, board sanding of the boat and now I'm ready to patch what I found. Um, found a few divots. Um, here was one where the, pa the paint came off took it off with a razor blade. You can get a razor blade a safety one that has a one end does not have a blade on it. And you can you can pick the paint away, which you should do because it's flaky as you get it off. So then I went in and I dished it out with my sanding board to make sure I had a nice like when you're putting fiberglass up you should have kind of a, a dish or a bowl. So I did that. This might have been where the trailer had it. Or I had some adhesive that was really, meaning tape, was really strong. It might have pulled it. So um, that was the only big piece I had come off. The rest were just small divots from things. Um, could, have, could have been road gravel um, just, you know, when I moved. So I'm going to go ahead and patch up everything on the bottom, on the sides, and um, the spray rail has some areas um, underneath here. I see some gaps I'm gonna fill. Um, after I fill it with uh, thickened uh, epoxy so that I have a nice epoxy bond and then I'll see what sort of fairing I have to do. But um, yeah, so, you know, I've got a couple things here that will need some attention. So I'm gonna put some total fair fairing compound by um, Total Boat that on there. Thankfully they're really shallow and just really small ones. You can see it's not not much at all. This one I'm going to have to get a spatula because it's got to bridge that big area. The rest of them are really small which is nice. I put this paint on 20 years ago and it really did well all these years. And um, yeah it's made my run up to the priming and painting stage um, this week really fun versus what I've as you know I've had to deal with with the transom and um, the gunnel so I'm going to finish this and uh, the next time we meet I will have the boat ready for priming and I'll show you how to do that using a Lexial paint um, that I mentioned before is distributed in the Michigan area anyways by Miller Boatworks and Andy from Boatworks Today YouTube channel. Other parts of the country will have other distributors. If you go to the, I'm assuming you could go to Alexiel, which is a Manquitz, I think it's in Virginia, paint. They probably have a distributor list. Um, I, all I know is Andy and um, Northern Michigan, the UP. So. You could go through Andy, I suppose. So, um, yeah. So the next time we meet, let's put some primer on this boat and move forward. So 
Thank you for tuning in again this week. If you're not a subscriber and want to get uh, bi-weekly updates, um, I'll be doing that from now on. Please subscribe. And if you like what you've seen, and you could even go back to the other um, 12 episodes I've done up until this point, um, you could also hit the like button if you finding it entertaining and useful. And um, we'll meet again in two weeks. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.